Okay, this is uh, Tom Eckert here. We're coming back at EnviroTech and uh, just wanted to uh, throw out some ideas about importing shapefiles into InfraWorks. Uh, ultimately, we're going to be importing them into Civil 3D, looking at the map, uh, 3D functions. But occasionally, it's easier to look at InfraWorks and uh, some of the uh, aspects of Model Builder. So um, as you create your model, you're going to have uh, a, a, a collection of objects created from a surface to raster uh, imagery. So you've got not only the DEM surface, which is a digital raster surface, but you've got the imagery. And then you also have a bunch of uh, alignments. And so each one of these alignments, uh, the way that InfraWorks treats them, is the same way that Civil 3D treats them, is that these uh, come from OpenStreetMaps. And so, uh, but what, one of the features is this is all just public domain. You gra wrap a, uh, a quick circle polygon around uh, uh, an area of interest. And, um, and then you will uh, pull in all the uh, outside data. But occasionally, as we do in this case, we have shape files that were given to us. And so we go to our data sources here under the first orange button. When you mouse over it, you see it's created manager model. And this import, you can either actually add data from a uh, data source. That, so if you had like a, uh, an Esri server, MySQL server, even the Bing Map server, you can connect directly to the source. And that's, that's actually a great way to do it. Or as you receive these shape files, um, then you can just grab them right from your desktop. Uh, SDF is, is AutoCAD's equivalent of shape. And the thing about the shape files, these are very small files. Here's uh, two of them that we've got. One is uh, a pad. So on the pad shape file, when you hit open, brings it in and all it does is it adds it here. This is one of the real uh, challenging things is it brought, brings it into a, uh, a queue, but it's not configured yet. And so if you look at that, but right clicking on here, configure, now opens up the GIS portion in either Map3D or in InfraWorks. And really the only setting you need to change is the type of schema that uh, has its feature class orientation in the metadata. Um, in this case, these are the parcels. So you click on parcels. If you look, it's already geolocated to New Mexico uh, uh, State Plain East in U.S. Survey feet. It's 1983. All the source, all the metadata, everything is just right there. So as you're looking at this parcel data, really all you have to do is click on this close and refresh. It's going to run out to the, uh, the local drive, grab the shape files, and place them where they need to be. Now, in this case, it's right here. We've got our area of interest. That shape file is shown. When you click on it, it's got area, but it's also got just a ton of metadata that's attached to that uh, uh, vector shape file. You can move it. This little gizmo here allows you to move it in three dimensional because uh, both in Civil 3D and InfraWorks, you're actually living in a 3D uh, model. But in this case, what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out we've got a road here, which is a connector road. When you click on it, it's got some aspects to it. When you right click, it says convert to design road. And so as soon as you convert it to a design road, it's not just a two dimensional uh, 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 conceptual aspect. Now on this design road, when you click on it, you actually can say, show me the profile view. And this is the profile with the elevation. So we're right here and I got this set for meters just for now, but, um, uh, but all the aspects of this alignment and profile are in that road that we're trying to tie into. So we've got a, a, an aspect of, now this is actually a design element. It's not just conceptual, but it is actually a design element for engineering. So we're going to move in from our conceptual view up here as we look at it into an engineering view. Not as pretty in the background imagery. We won't, we'll have a lot more of the surface, but um, we want to highlight basically our design elements. So same workflow, go into here, import, shape file, this time it's going to be the road itself. We hit open, adds it to here. There's no feature class associated with it because we haven't assigned it. It just says it's not configured. So I right click. I say I want to configure it. In this case, this is really where the settings of the uh, shapefile type, because if we put roads or right away, depending if it's a, if it's just a caliche road, um, again, whether it's in meters or feet, it's going to identify what the uh, the input data is. So I normally leave it for meters just to uh, to to collect and then you can convert to feet anytime. I mean, it's just, it's living in both because it is geo-referenced based on the uh, latitude and longitude. I hit close and refresh in here. Now all of a sudden that same shape file, it becomes added to a, uh, a roads feature class. It says Victor, vector here. And now this is that shape file looking at it a little more robustly. 
and when we click in here, and I want you to see what happens is I've got a design road component, and I've got a shape file that comes in. This was about where they said the intersect point is. But when I click on this and I change it from just a shape file road and I say convert to design road, this is the most amazing thing is watch what happens as soon as it refreshes. Is now you've got this design road and it's got, um, you, you can right click and see the same profiles. You can see the same if you wanted to add any uh, curves to it or that. But here's the profile and the match. Now, if you wanted to, which we normally don't on, on, on plats in this case, but you could have it draw the intersection in. Here's the thing, though. That intersection is not going to work. The visibility triangle, there's uh, uh, the, the way the road is configured is that it's got curb. And so this just for schematics would work out fine. When you add in a new design road, and it could be from anywhere, but say we add in here and we go, I want a component road maybe, and we're going to have a, a water depot that we're going to put out. When you click on that, <clears throat> I want you to see what happens here is that even though the roads look like they're the same, now that this is a con design component road, this guy, the intersection was drawn already. So if I click on here and I want to move this, I'm just running out of real estate here to, to demonstrate on one screen. But um, this, this particular road here, maybe if I turn him off and turn this on, there we go. Uh, you get the same idea that this is now the gizmo. I can take this road, and it's got certain uh, speeds and widths and, and materials and that, but it is an engineering design. As soon as I move it, redraws the intersection, and it's got an object. So these object orientation, I want to show you the richness of the... Uh, I mean, you can do cross-section views. You can do just a ton of stuff um, for construction. So that's all contained in the shapefile, the model, the InfraWorks. What I'm going to do here, and this is what you're going to get via emails, I'm going to actually kick out the um, model here. I'm going to say export to IMX file. And with that IMX file, you're going to see that as we grab, oh, let's use the entire model. It's going to say target coordinate system. We know that it's going to be here. I haven't set the New Mexico yet. Let me just go ahead and do that while I'm on screen. I've got USA uh, somewhere down in New Mexico. I think it was EF. There it is, state plane, E zone, and feet. We've got that. It says, where do you want to export it? I've created a small little folder here under projects, Viratech. I'm going to put it in export. I'm going to put Eddie for the county, uh, a lot of that. But it is an Autodex IMX format, and this is what you're going to be getting in uh, via email. It's going to kick out all the things that you're looking for, and you can bring that into Civil 3D. Um, and, and start the process as well. So, uh, Anyway, that's uh, round two. Next step is the Map3D workflow, and I uh, appreciate you watching.